The general theory of relativity is Albert Einstein's theory of gravity, which describes gravitational forces in terms of the curvature of space-time caused by the presence of mass. As the American physicist John Wheeler put it, space tells matter how to move, matter tells space how to curve. The starting point of the general theory, known as the equivalence principle, is that frames of reference undergoing acceleration and frames of reference in gravitational fields are equivalent. Among predictions of general relativity which have been borne out by observation are the advance of the perihelion of Mercury, the bending of light in a gravitational field, the spin-down of pulsars due to the emission of gravitational waves, and that time runs more slowly in strong gravitational fields. General relativity treats special relativity as a restricted sub-theory that applies locally to any region of space sufficiently small that its curvature can be neglected. Let's now look at the origins of the general theory. By the early years of the 20th century, physicists had begun to appreciate, due to the special theory of relativity, the intimate connections between energy and mass and space and time. Yet gravity stubbornly remained outside the picture. Henri Poincaré, in a paper submitted in July 1905, just days before Einstein's special relativity paper, suggested that all forces ought to transform according to the Lorentz transformation. But if this were the case, he pointed out, then Newton's law of gravitation couldn't be valid because Newton's law allows instantaneous action at a distance. Drawing an analogy with electromagnetic theory, Poincaré proposed that gravitational interactions take place at the speed of light and involve waves that propagate at this fixed rate. Earlier in 1900, Lorentz had also hinted that gravitation could be put down to actions that travel at light speed. It was in 1907 that Einstein began seriously to look into the problem of gravity. Two years after putting forward the special theory of relativity, he was sitting in his patent office in Bern, wondering what would have to be done to Newtonian gravitation to make it fit in with his newly hatched theory, when suddenly, he recalled, he had the happiest thought of his life. For an observer falling freely from the roof of a house, there exists, at least in his immediate surroundings, no gravitational field. Indeed, if the observer drops some bodies, then these remain to him in a state of rest or uniform motion. The observer, therefore, has the right to interpret his state as at rest. To drive home this point, imagine a slightly different situation. You're in a windowless room and are told that one of two circumstances is true. Either the room is floating in space far away from any source of gravity, or it's an elevator whose cable has been cut. Your task is to decide which, without leaving the room or otherwise obtaining information from outside. According to Einstein, the task is impossible because there's no experiment you can carry out that will help you decide between the two scenarios. Nor, for the same reason, could you tell whether you were in a room that was sitting on the Earth or being smoothly accelerated by a rocket at 9.8 meters per second per second, the rate at which things fall freely in Earth's gravity. There's simply no observable difference, Einstein realized, between acceleration and gravity. On some deep level, they're one and the same. It's an assumption that broadens the equivalence principle introduced by Galileo, which asserts that all objects fall at the same rate, with the result that mass measured gravitationally is indistinguishable from mass measured by its inertia. What's now called the Einstein or strong equivalence goes beyond this older, weaker version by stating that all the laws of physics, not just the law of gravity, are the same in all small regions of space, regardless of their relative motion or acceleration. In the same year, 1907, that Einstein announced this broader principle of equivalence, he also began linking his mass-energy relationship equals mc squared with gravity. 
It had long been known that gravity acts on everything with mass. Now that mass and energy turned out to be two sides of the same coin, it seemed reasonable to Einstein that gravity could act on energy too. In particular, it ought to be able to influence the movement of light rays. Einstein's first scientific paper, published in March 1905, had been on the nature of light. In it, he argued that the photoelectric effect could be explained if light behaved as if it consisted of tiny discrete particles. Later, these particles came to be known as photons. Because photons contain energy and therefore an equivalent mass, their paths sought to be bent by gravity, just as the path of a bullet is curved by gravity as it travels from gun to target. But in 1907, when Einstein realized this, he was thinking only in terms of how light might be influenced by gravity here on Earth, and there seemed little chance of experimentally verifying an effect that would be so small. For four years, Einstein published nothing else on gravity. Then, in 1911, it dawned on him that the bending of light by gravity could be checked by astronomical means. Light from a background star ought to follow not a straight line, but a gentle arc as it passed close to the Sun as seen from Earth. Einstein came up with a figure for this bending. In 1913, Einstein wrote to the American astronomer George Hale, asking him if it were possible to look for the minuscule deflection of starlight by the Sun without waiting for a total eclipse. Hale replied that it wasn't. The Sun's bright disk needed to be completely blotted out before any deflection of starlight would show as an apparent displacement of stars from their normal positions. The German astronomer Erwin Findlay Freundlich planned an expedition to Russia to observe an eclipse due to occur there in 1914 and thus to test Einstein's prediction. But World War I intervened and the expedition was cancelled. For Einstein, it proved to be a lucky break. His prediction would have turned out wrong. By 1912, Einstein was hot on the heels of a new theory of gravity that would incorporate his strong equivalence principle. By calling on this principle, he realized he could avoid dealing with gravity as a force altogether. Move in the right way by free falling, and you don't feel gravity in an inertial frame. You're weightless, and gravity drops out of the picture. But Einstein also realized that the Lorentz transformation of special relativity wouldn't carry over to a more general setting because the way you have to move to cancel out gravity is different in different locations. What he needed was some mathematical way to stitch together local inertial frames in different places so that gravity cancelled out everywhere. Although he wasn't yet sure what form his new theory of gravity would take, he did know this, if all accelerated systems are equivalent with respect to the laws of physics, then Euclidean geometry cannot hold in all of them. <laughs>